Good morning. Welcome to Ask Ashley. My name is Ashley, and this is the live where you ask me your crochet business questions, and I answer them for you. So my mouse is being very weird, so I might be like plugging it and unplugging it throughout our live so I can um, keep it charged because it's not charging for some reason. Um, but we already have a handful of questions, so I'm going to go ahead and start right away so we don't waste a single second. So the first question is from Samantha, and she says, do you, do you have any videos on how to navigate Canva? I have a video showing you how to um, make stickers on Canva. That might be the only one so far, but it teaches you a lot in that video about how to like go get around it, how to like go around Canva, like use the platform. Um, I'm trying to search my videos, but it's not an option on if you go to my YouTube and go to search and then type in the word Canva, anything that's Canva related will pop up for you. I, I also have there might be two on there, but there's definitely. Oh, yeah, there's the yarn color chart videos. Those will help you too. the. Um, link in bio video that will help you. So there's multiple videos on there and each one shows you how to navigate Canva. Um, DIY product tags shows you how to navigate Canva. None of them are just spe specifically set for how to na navigate Canva. They're like actually using Canva and you can see how to actually use it. Um, so hopefully those are helpful. No Tilly. Thank you, Samantha, for your question. Next up we have... Oh, wait. Hillary, I want to post photos on my social media with a book recommendation to go along with my book buddies. Would that be okay? The buddies are not designed or I don't see why not. I don't see why not. If you have to be careful with Disney things specifically, um, like if they, I don't know, be very, very careful with Disney. Like if you say princess doll and she looks like Elsa, you could probably get in trouble. Like if you have an Elsa book and you say ice princess doll and she looks like Elsa, that's probably a little too close. But if you have Peter Rabbit and just a bunny stuffy, you'll probably be fine. Um, so be careful, but you can do it. I'm pretty sure I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. This is just my opinion, my my random person on the internet opinion. So um, take it or, you know, don't don't take it as gold because I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know 100%. But I feel like as long as you don't make it like very, very close to something that's super copyrighted, you should be fine as long as you keep it really vague. Thank you for your question. Next up is Kim and she says, are other online sales sites other than Etsy and Ravelry that are productive get good response for sales and other revenue? So I'm assuming you are a product seller and I only use Etsy and Ravelry and I have my Etsy pattern site, which is not pattern like crochet pattern. It's pattern like Etsy pattern site, capital P pattern. And those are the only ones that I use. I don't even promote my Ravelry. I don't like the I don't like the platform. Um, I, I find it hard to navigate. A lot of people like Ravelry better um, because you can like store things and organize them a little bit differently. I personally um, don't like the the user face of Ravelry, so I don't use it very often. Um, and I haven't posted any new patterns there in a very long time. So my goal to is Etsy. I don't know if there's other ones. Um, I've been seeing stuff popping up. I never know which ones are trustworthy or not. Um, I'd like to stick with the classics for myself. Um, and you could also start your own website and sell there as well. Thank you for your question. Tegan says, do you have any tips on ways to rein in your creativity? I want to make all the things, but I do not want to overwhelm customers at my first market. How do you decide how many things to offer? Tegan, when it comes to getting over the fact that you want to make all the things, the best thing you can do is remember your why and focus on your ideal customer. You're not serving your ideal customer well if you give her too many options. You're going to overwhelm her. She's not going to understand who you are, or what you do, or how you, how you serve her. She's just going to be like, it's almost like going to a yard sale. It's just everything all over and you, you're just, nothing stands out to you as 
this is where I need to be. Um, maybe like a piece of furniture, but you know what I mean? Like, you're not like this, this is my yard sale. I need all of the things in this yard sale. They're very like hit or miss, right? And that's what will happen if you go to a market and you are not niched down. It will be like a beautiful handmade crocheted yard sale. And it will be very difficult for people to mentally realize why they need what you sell. So my best example, and this one is extremely niche. So let me just say the niche or the better, always the niche or the better. And I know that this one is an extreme example, but there's a crocheter and a cro she's also a crochet designer and she makes um, crochet dog coffee cozies and they're different dog breeds. And that's all she makes. I think she might have added cat breeds to this point, but she doesn't make dog stuffies. She just makes dog breed coffee cozies. If I was at a market and I saw her booth and I saw a, a golden doodle, a gold golden doodle, I would say, oh, it's Theo. I need that. If I saw a curly black and white dog, I would say, oh, it's Tanner and, and Tilly. I need those. I need that. Or even if I didn't have dogs and I saw a golden retriever, I would say, oh, Taylor has a golden retriever. She needs that. I would immediately know who needs it, whether it's me or somebody else in my life. I would be able to tell them, I'm like, can I, you have a business card? Can I show my friend Taylor? She would love this. She has a golden retriever and she's obsessed with coffee. Like they would know immediately who would benefit from the product that you sell, whether it's them or somebody close to them. And that's really, really good, especially when they can remember your name. If it makes a little bit of sense, it's easy to remember they will be able to ref refer you to other people. And when I say think of your why, let your why be your driving force. If you are trying to save money for a Disney trip or to, to buy your kid's first car or to pay off your house or to put a down payment on a house, think about that. When you want to make all the things, just say, I got I to gotta work hard. I have to put my down payment down on my house or we're going to live in this apartment forever. I have to focus and you just you overcome the want with the need, right? You 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 focus on the need and let the want kind of go to the background for just a season, just a season. Everything changes all the time. So it's not something that you have to do 24 seven. It's not like you can never make your own crochet things that you want ever again. You just need to focus as best as you can for a season while you're growing your business. Also make time for selfish crochet if it's in if it's in your um, schedule, like if you can make time for it. If you are in a season that's too busy and you cannot make time for it, that's okay. Ideally, you would try to squeeze in a little bit, like maybe just on a Sunday or something, just for own mental peace, but everybody's different. Um, if you can squeeze in selfish crochet, that's going to help you have your creativity outlet. Um, but if you're trying to build a business and you're trying to build a well-known brand, niching down is going to make it easier for you and easier for your customers to know why they need the things that you sell. Thank you for your question, Tegan. I hope that was helpful. Heather says, do you recommend apps for photos like Photo Room? You can choose backgrounds for your pics. Um, I've never used that, Heather. I do know that creating photos like that by like cutting them out and putting them into different backgrounds is an art and it's not easy. The shadows have to be perfect. The the lighting, everything just needs like the space, like the amount of size, it needs to be just right. Like the sizes for things. Like if I had this, this notebook and I was trying to show this notebook and I had it laying next to my phone, um, but this notebook was like two times bigger than it is now, it's going to not be the same size spatially as my phone. You know what I mean? So that's very difficult. It's not impossible. It's just difficult. I've never used um, Photo Room before. I have used Canva to remove backgrounds and to, to move things around. It takes me a very long time, but sometimes I can get it good enough. If you go to my shop on my acraftyconcept.com forward slash shop and go to my product tags section, you can see how we created mock-ups of digitally that looks like actual paper and I like had to cut it out and put the shadows and it's not perfect but it's good enough and it gets the job done to let my customer see what it is that I'm selling so you can go check those out if you want to see that also Teresa of Dave Rose used to be really good at it she would post her wall hangers not my wall hangers but her wall hangers and photoshop them into a picture of like a chair um, sitting in a living room and it looked really realistic and I could not, I tried and it was a disaster, but also that was like four years ago. So maybe I've learned a little bit. Um, so I'm not hundred percent sure when it comes to editing your product photos, you want them to be as true to color as possible. 
You do not want to use heavy filters or affect the saturation or anything that's like super drastic. You want it to look as true to color as possible. If you do not, your customers will get something in the mail that they were not expecting to get. And that is a recipe for a one star review. They will be very upset. So you need to be extremely as true to color as possible and extremely descriptive in your listing description so they know exactly without a shadow of a doubt what they're getting. Thank you for your question. Heather has another question and she says, how do you hang your wall hangers? I should put them. So in my wall hanger listing, there is a piece of hardware that I recommend and I love it. It's just a metal thing that smushes into, it's like flat and it smushes into the drywall and it's got two little hookies, one on the top and one on the bottom. I like to put mine on the top because then the rest of the wall hanger covers the bottom. So it is on one of those right now. It's just a tiny little metal you shove it into the wall. It should be in the, um, any of the wall hanger listing videos or blog posts on my blog. Uh, if you go to craftyconcept.com forward slash free patterns, you will be able to see all of them and you can scroll until you see a wall hanger and then click on it and go check out the materials. And that's where it should be listed. Thank you, Heather. Jaren, this is an extremely um, complex question and answer. There's not a quick answer to that. It is, um, it's a whole thing. I teach it inside of Crochet Boss Academy. That's my course. I have a lot of free video tutorials on my YouTube channel to help you. And I have a ton of Q&A recordings like this one to help you. So I would start binge listening to those things and taking it all in, taking some notes, paying attention, looking, especially the things that I say over and over again, Start listening to those. So you can check out all of the Ask Ashley replays here on YouTube, or you can go to a craftyconcept.com forward slash podcast and listen to a bunch of the old Tuesday talks videos that we used to do over the years. So I would I would be binging those. I think that would be the um, easiest way for you to learn how to start a crochet business. Amy says, what's your favorite type of yarn to use for wall hangings? I like uh, worst away acrylic. Um Yarn B Soft and Sleek is my favorite. I love this yarn works well too. You want something that will stretch to fit on your ring, but not stretch too much to where the middle is floppy. That's not what you want. You can change the pattern by stopping at a certain row, like before we're supposed to stop for this one specifically, or adding more rows if you are um, mindful enough to be able to see the repeats. And if you're not used to doing that, don't do that. Um, but if you are used to modifying patterns or something, you can do that uh, to make it grow even further. Also, you could look at the um, Crafty Boho Pillow pattern because it's the same as this, it's just bigger. So if you need to add more rows to make it a little bit bigger, look at the Crafty Boho Pillow pattern on my blog and you will be able to, um, you will be able to see some more rows if you need to make it bigger. Thank you, Amy. And she also says, what is your favorite color changing technique? So I guess it depends on what I'm changing colors for, but I like to change my colors before I finish the stitch. So you can, if there's any of my videos, look at the Ava Bunny video on my blog, um, Emma, on my YouTube channel. I show it how I do that there. I show it in all my videos, how I do it. Um, what's coming soon or what just, came out the daisy blanket has a lot of color changes in it where i show you how i do it but i insert my hook and pull up my yarn like i'm getting ready to complete the stitch but instead of grabbing my same color and pulling it through i grab my new color and pull it through to complete the stitch that is my favorite technique for changing colors thank you amy for your question hello way now oh Hobby Lobby is having their clearance sale right now. It's earlier than usual. Yes, um, we have all been hitting them up in different towns. I, I didn't get to go to my Hobby Lobby, but I went to Gatlinburg and I got a bunch. But yeah, the stuff that they're clearancing out is stuff that they will not be restocking. Like when it's gone, it's gone. And there's not a specific time limit. Yarn goes on sale every other week for 30% off, but the stuff with the orange stickers is being clearanced out. It's like 60 to 70% off some of it. And it will not be... Um, restocked once it's sold out. They're trying to get rid of those specific um, colors. Thank you, Tracy, for your question, or I mean, your input. Tegan liked the overcome your want with the need statement. 
Thank you, Tegan. I'm glad you found that helpful. I'm trying to check out the comments to see if there are any, any conversations happening. Good morning, Dana. Okay, well, that is all the questions as of right now. Um, we will still hang out for a little bit more and let more questions come in. 15 minutes, y'all, in and out. That's it. Um, but if you have more questions, we will hang out for a little bit longer until... Um, um, Heather says that she heard they're doing away with all their non-Hobby Lobby brand yarn. Have you heard anything like that? So, Heather, I'm not sure, but I have noticed that they bring in and take out other brands all the time. Um, I don't know if they will keep any of them like statement yarn in their in their stock or whatever, but they do go through other brands yarns fairly, fairly um, all the time. Not periodically, but like all the time. Um, so I don't know if they're for sure trying to cut out other brands. I mean, honestly, they could and still have a successful yarn line. My Hobby Lobby yarn, Hermit Lurmby yarn is my favorite yarn, hands down, compared to any other brand. The only thing Hobby Lobby doesn't have that I have to get from a different brand is the Burnett Home Decor. There's not a good substitution for Burnett Home Decor against any brand. Burnett Home Decor is unique on its own. Um, I've seen co something cozy, which is similar, but it's like nylon. So it's really super stretchy and that's not what you want. Um, so I don't know if they're like trying to get rid of all of it or if they're just bringing stuff in and out. Um, obviously, their, their brand of yarn is going to be their main focus. Focused. Their main focus. And um, it's my favorite. Yarn B Soft and Sleek is my favorite yarn on the planet, hands down. It is a number four worsted weight acrylic yarn, but it's low pill, P-I-L-L. -L, so it means it doesn't get as fuzzy as often. Creative Tracy said most of what she got on clearance was Hobby Lobby brand. I actually did a Instagram live showing all of the yarn that I got. Sierra will go to my Instagram and click on the Reels tab and find it for you and send you the link here while we are still hanging out. Um, but I did a live showing all of the Clarence yarn that I just got like mm, a week and a half ago, maybe. Um, but there was some Hobby Lobby yarn and there was some non Hobby Lobby yarn. When they clearance out their Hobby Lobby yarn, sometimes they're just getting away, getting away, taking away certain colors. Like they, they get rid of some, I love this yarn. Um, but it's just the colorways. Like if those colors aren't doing well, they will discontinue them. My favorite color that they discontinued was like lavender smoke or smoked lavender. I can't remember what it was called, but it was very, very pretty. Um, they got rid of that one like four years ago. And then sometimes they do get rid of an entire Hobby Lobby line if it's not doing well. Um, I've seen lines that only have like six or seven colors. Um, I guess they were trying them out to see how they went and then they would add, I, I don't know. Uh, but they, if they don't sell well, they just get them out of there. Um, Jaren says, I want to make up business cards to add to packages. Do you have any advice on what should be included on the card? So, Jen, I would look at, Sierra just linked the Instagram video if you guys want to go see my yarn haul from the Hobby Lobby clearance. Jen, for your business card, I would put you a picture. Of, well, I can show you my business card. So, on the front of my business card, I have my logo. And on the back, I have my picture. My URL, that's the most, that's the top most important thing is the URL. And then I have my like elevator pitch and it says visit a crafty concept.com for free crochet patterns and business tips to help you take your crochet business to the next level. Love Ashley. And then I have my socials down here at the bottom that just has add a crafty concept because that's what I am on all of these socials. I probably should add TikTok. Um, I get mine printed at Vistaprint and I usually um, splurge and do a slightly higher quality. This one is the matte, like it feels like, kind of feels like the covers of my notebooks, um, the matte finish and I get the rounded corners because my ball here is, is a round ball and I thought that just looked better together. No Tilly. Um, but I do like um, Vistaprint for business cards and you can get a coupon. So Google Vistaprint coupons before you buy anything. Um, I would not put your phone number on there. I used to put my phone number on mine in like 2015. I would not do that because if your business takes off, your phone's going to get, that's not going to be good. You're not going to want that. That's personal information that I personally would not put on my business card. Um, and if you have, if you don't have an Etsy shop yet and you have Facebook, 
or something like that, the more the more ways that like if you were like Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, the more things that you add to that, the more confusing it's going to be. You want it to be simple to the point and as efficient as possible. Um, so don't clutter it up too much. Just if they go to my website, they can find all of the other stuff. But if they go to social media, if they search out a crafty concept, they'll find me. So that's what I put on mine. You can go to Etsy and look at what other people put on theirs, like search business card templates and just look and see the information that people put on theirs. You can also go to Canva and search business card templates and see the information that they have for you to fill in on those as well and see which ones make sense for you and your business. Hillary says, do pre-orders work on Etsy? I'm not ready to ship orders because I'm moving. So Hillary, I would not take orders until you're ready to ship them. You will, I mean, anything could happen. Anything could happen with your moving, with your Etsy. I just would not do that. You can be making listings and saving them as drafts. That way, when you get moved and settled, you can make them go live. Now you could... If you're going to be moving in two weeks, I would set my turnaround time to four weeks just so you have enough time. Um, if you wanted to absolutely keep some stuff up and running right now, custom orders are different than pre-orders. I don't like pre-orders. I try not to do them in my business. Like I've wanted to like create some Crochet Boss Academy shirts, but I do not want to do pre-orders. So my next bet would be to order a whole bunch of sizes that I think might sell and then try to sell them. And um, whatever doesn't sell is what I'm stuck with, right? So you have to be mentally prepared for that. Um, but I just, I don't like shopping pre-orders. So I don't like doing pre-orders. I don't like making people wait two weeks for the product to come in and then me ship it. So then another three to five days, I just personal preference. If you wanted to do it you're a different way, you're, you're welcome to do that. Just be mindful that it could get out of hand really fast. And if you do not ship your orders on time, it will affect your star seller a, a thing which isn't even important but if people see that they think you're doing a great job so they're more confident shopping with you also if you don't ship them out on time you will get poor reviews and if you get a bunch of poor reviews nobody will shop with you because it'd be like two star two star average it's just not worth all the risk in my opinion um, but if you think you can do it in a way where you can still get all of your stuff out on time you do you bruh um thank you hillary for your question Esmeralda says, is Etsy worth it? They So they cha charge monthly. Esmeralda, yes, Etsy is worth it. I have a ton of reels on my Instagram. You can go check all of them out and keep scrolling through them. There's a bunch. I'm a huge Etsy advocate. Um, I believe anybody who sells handmade things that has the ability to take on more orders should be on Etsy. Do I think you should have Etsy over your own site? No, I think you should have both, but not at the beginning of your journey. If you're just starting out, Etsy is the easiest, quickest way to get your shop up and running so you can start selling things and making money and getting your, your name out there in the community and to the market, right? If you are spending a year building your own e-commerce site, that is a year that you are not selling your products. So I, I like for people to get on Etsy, sign up, get it going, and start selling your products. And then if you want to add your own off Etsy e-commerce site, you're welcome to do that in the future. Ideally, you will have both. No, they do not charge monthly. They charge fees per sale. So there's a six and a half percent fee for the total of the purchase. That includes the product plus the shipping, a 20 cent listing fee to list your item on Etsy and a three percent ish transaction fee to charge have a um, be able to take a credit card. Uh, I talk about Etsy fees in an Instagram reel, probably. I think it's an Instagram reel. I talked about it a lot in my masterclass a couple weeks ago, but that is um, over. So I believe it's probably on my Instagram reels. I would definitely just go like binge watch some of those and see if you can find any um, that makes sense for you. Uh, past all the Crochet Boss Academy stuff before all of that. You'll be able to find some there. You're welcome. Um, I am at a crafty concept. www.instagram.com. A crafty C O N C P T. There's me. I just linked it for you in the. Well, I didn't type HTTPS. I don't know if that's clickable. Um, but that is how. That is how you find me on Instagram. Thank you for your question. Is it okay to start an Etsy shop and then put it on vacation until I'm ready to ship? I wouldn't, Maria. I would just draft your listings 
and not make any of them live. So you have to make one listing live in order to start your shop. But then after it's live, maybe you can just go back and draft it, like go back and turn it into a draft instead of a live listing. Um, well, if you've never listed an item before and your shop has never went live before, I would I would just draft it. I wouldn't even make my shop live yet. I would get my name, start filling in all of my information and start drafting listings. And then I would open my shop because you have to have at least one listing in order for your shop to go live. When I'm done moving, I would open my shop and I would make my listings go live like one a day because the more active you are on the Etsy, that tells Etsy that you are an active shop, um, seller and they're more likely to show your stuff is what I've heard. I've heard people say that. Um, so I, I'm very active on my Etsy shop by listing new things pretty regularly. Um, that's what I would do. I wouldn't go on vacation mode. I would keep everything at drafts until you're ready to go live. That's what I would do. Perfect, perfect. Thank you guys for your questions. Um, Kathy, I, I don't think I want to share that. Um, you can message me on Instagram and I can tell you privately. Tilly, that's not, that is not yarn for you. Hey, that's my yarn. You're not a yarn puppy. Silly girl. I'm already ready for my afternoon coffee and it's not even lunchtime. Well, do you guys have any other, any other things you want to chat about before we end our live? This one was very, very quick. Very, very fast. Um, our next Ask Ashley will also be on Thursday. Um, Thursdays for the rest of March and Thursdays for all of April at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then in May, they'll probably change. We'll probably do another p.m. in May. But for the rest of this month, this is where we are going to be hanging out. Well, since we have some extra time, let's do a giveaway. Sierra, how does that make you feel? Stream STR stream yard giveaway. Let me pull it up. Let's do a giveaway. And to enter the giveaway, you just type in this the phrase, the giveaway winning phrase, and then it will automatically generate through the, the platform that I'm using right now. Um, I need it 323. Uh, no, ask Ashley. I think that's how to start a crochet business live. Is this one called how to start a crochet business? It says live. So I, I guess, assume that's the one that we're doing right now. Um, can someone tell me if this video is called how to start a crochet business? Oh, it is. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to make it that one. And the key phrase is going to be, let's make it. Okay. The point, the point being, when I tell you the key phrase, you have to type it in exactly like that, or it will not um, it will not calculate for you. So, Danella, I'm going to answer your question while we are doing the giveaway. So, as soon as the giveaway gets started, I will answer your question. So, we are going to make the um, Crochet Boss Academy example banners. We are going to make the giveaway phrase. Okay banner here it is hashtag yarn type that in the comments and then it will automatically um automatically collect your entries and then we will pick an, a winner from the automatic thing so it's very automatic i do not have to do it at all samantha i see your comment now did we miss some I mean, I, all I see is, do you see my comments? I see it now. Oh, okay. And the Canva one, which I already, I already answered. Let me make sure this is collecting. Awesome. Okay. So while it's collecting, I'm going to, okay. We're going to do this one while it's collecting. I know I've answered this before, but what are the best amounts of brand colors? There's not a best, there's not a perfect number. Um, the goal is to just not have too many. And um, I like I, I like eight, eight to ten. Um, but if you need more because maybe you sell animal things, you could just stick to a color family. That's what I teach my Crochet Boss Academy students is to stick to a color family because 
that way everything stays cohesive. Even if you're using a new color, it still is cohesive with the rest of your brand. So stick to neutrals or brights or muted rainbow, pastel rainbow, tropical rainbow, whatever the color family that fits your brand, stick within that color family and pull out a few of those from that color family to be your main brand colors for your statement pieces and pull some, pull even more few of those out for like your logos and stuff like that. But there sadly is not a magic number. Okay, let's share my screen. We got all kinds of entries. Uh, where is this? Where is the screen? It is called giveaway tool. Here we go. Share. Okay, now we're going to click draw and you have to be present to be the winner. And when you win, you get to pick a free crochet pattern from my Etsy shop. So you can tell us which PDF you want and we will send it to you. You will need to send your information. Here we go. There's all the information down below. So read that very quickly. And then we're going to draw the names. And if you want to, you got a couple more seconds to enter. Um, if you are not present and you do not say, I'm here, I'm here, within two minutes of the name being announced, two full minutes, 120 seconds, we're going to draw again. And there's nothing we can do about it. We're not sending, sorry, I stepped away to go to the bathroom. We're not doing that. You have to be present within two minutes in order to win the PDF. If we try to do it the other way, it gets extremely hectic and stressful and it's just not fun anymore and it's not worth it on our end. We would just not do giveaways. So here we go. Who's going to win? Maria. Welcome. Good job, Maria. I know you've been hanging out because you've been asking questions. So after Maria says like, I'm here or yay, I'm so excited. Something in the comments to let us know that she is here. She is present and ready to accept her free crochet pattern PDF. Yay, Maria. So excited. So Maria, follow the instructions on the screen and we will send you a PDF of your choice for one of the crochet patterns on in my shop. Thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you for being here, for asking your questions, for putting questions in early. I appreciate you guys. I hope this was helpful. If something stood out to you, go take action on that thing. Even if you're just writing some stuff down, writing some thoughts that you had, whatever it is, go take action. That's going to help you retain the information and it's going to help you actually change your business with the information that you were given. I will see you guys next week, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Thursday. Have a great day. Day.